I recently got myself a better graphics card so I could talk about VR games. And I must say, VR really does make a difference when it comes to immersion. It's easier to get lost in the VR world because the real world is nowhere to be found. Only you, the virtual world, and whatever is trying to tear out your jugular. So, when I was graciously handed a copy of Horror Store Hollow Seed, I was very enthralled to play it. When I booted up the game, Bitter Reality punched me in the face because you shouldn't get your expectations too high, especially if it's an early access game. Horror Snorri is not VR ready, despite being able to play the game in VR. Every time you try to play it in VR, the UI is so close to the face that the interaction with it is almost impossible, and the camera is mysteriously located 420 feet above our character's left shoulder. That aspect wouldn't stretch my nerves if it didn't hinder the playing experience. I couldn't enter the spooky house because grabbing items require you to find the sweet spot that only appears 1% of the time, and it disappears every time you blink. I gave up on the VR aspect and left disappointed. Then again, I should have expected this amount of jankiness. It is an early access game, so maybe the full game will straighten out its jankiness. So I play Scorer's Glory in regular mode, and you know what? I believe the VR would not help much. VR can only numb a boring game for so long before I opt out for a better one. Implore Her Inventory has the classic horror setup of dumb teens exploring an inconspicuous area that doesn't need a GTFO sign for people to get the hint. Well, shortly after entering the town of Hollow Seed, chaos ensues and your character wakes up alone, lost, and down a couple of friends. You set off to find them and end up in a haunted house that becomes super clingy of you the moment you step in. To save your friends, you have to face the horrors inside and find 70,000 keys. I can't go any further than that because the game isn't finished. I can say though, the writing has the quality of a low budget B horror movie. Funny? Uh, Jay, it's disgusting. It's not funny. My turn. My turn. <laughs> Let me tell you a really, really creepy story. <laughs> yes, go ahead, go ahead. It's funny. Seriously? Not to say that's a bad thing. I love low-budget B-horror movies. They are always a great distraction from our abysmal reality. So, if you aren't into that, then you'll mostly be riled. From what I've read, the story that's in early access is only the background, while the real story is shrouded in mystery. We'll have to wait and see if that's any better. So, let's move on to the least interesting thing, the gameplay. The best way to sum it up is that you walk slash run to every atom of the map to find key items, micro jump scares, and the room that magically progresses the story for some reason. Let's set the record straight about this abysmal fucking mechanic of having the player walking into an unrelated room to unlock a random door or to start a key event. It's non-organic and annoying. If you want the player to go to a room and interact with something to progress, then show how it's connected to the checklist. It reminds me of the terrible qualities of Clock Tower 2. <laughs> Sorry about that. Merely mentioning that travesty makes me want to upchuck my brain cells. There isn't much to do in Hollowweed, besides be a very enthusiastic key hoarder and admiring the okay-ish atmosphere. Well, that isn't exactly true. You do get chased by a demon a couple of times, and the term chase here is very loose. A chase implies a frantic panic of running away from an unstoppable force. The unstoppable force that gives chase isn't in the slightest scary. It gives the impression that there's an unpaid intern in there trying to make the rubber suit work. The creature lacks speed and an impactful design to instill fear in the player. So you can tell Explorer's Quarry's horror department is lacking and the scripted predictable jump scares don't help its case. You interact with something, then the game takes control and forces you to witness the scary event. Forcing the player to look at something scary is counterproductive. It makes the scares predictable and lose any impact it could have compared to organically letting it happen. Now, we could say the lack of polish, fun, horror, and challenge stems from this being an early access game, and only one guy is developing it. Viewing the game's Steam page does give the impression that everything I mentioned could be greatly improved, so why release this version to be played? 
honestly, I would say this is a poor representation of your ideas because the ideas you do have listed down sound fun, but they are barely illustrated here. Also, if you are watching this, sorry if it seems like I'm using your game as toilet paper. Don't think too much of this as a review, but more as a documentation. When the full game is done, I'll be referring back to this video to see if it lived up to your promises or were you blowing smokes and mirrors. I am rooting for you and I do hope this game is great. However, I can't really recommend your early access version because there isn't much thrills to be had. If anyone else enjoyed it, that's great. I'll be looking out for the full version and I do hope for the best.